Hello badminton fans and welcome to this leaning GeForce 8200 Plus badminton racket review and this is racket test number 640. Okay so let's start with price and availability. Um, the price of this racket is around £115, £110. Availability in the UK and Europe is very limited. We will be selling this racket via our racket sale site at www.badminton-racket-review.com. Our price will be, I think, about £90, £95, something like that for this racket. Um, in terms of specs, let's go through the specs and compare them to our own E-Zone uh, testing. So the... Oh no, we've got a leaning special going on here. Head heavy. And that is all you're going to tell me, really. Let's see what information we have from the manufacturers here. So we have that the manufacturer claims the overall racket weight is 86 grams. Just so you're clear, there's nothing written on the racket about the weight, about the shaft stiffness either and we don't have a grip size do we either it looks like a G4 but no nothing have we got anything on the grip size nope okay so I can only tell you what we can find so the overall weight according to the manufacturer is around 86 grams the badminton racket review e-zone testing shows this racket to weigh eight no sorry 90.6 grams the balance point of the racket again not written on the racket leaning come on man um, balance point of this racket according to manufacturer is its head heavy so it has a bias towards the head the badminton racket review ESO and balance point test shows it to be very head heavy so heading so a significant amount of the balance is significantly toward the head side of the racket okay shaft stiffness According to the manufacturer, the shaft stiffness is medium, and according to our own badminton racket review stiffness test, we also concur that this is a medium uh, stiff shaft. Other information on the racket, well, maximum, um, where it says GeForce e, uh, 8 2000 plus extra strong, extra strong refers to the DG Yonix DG Lite Super a uh, strong frame that allows for really high tension. So this will go into 35 pounds of string tension, which is really high, crazy high to be honest. Um, don't have a racket grip size on here. The racket is made in China and the frame is made of carbon fiber. And that, my friends, is all I can tell you in terms of specifications. So let's move on to design. It's actually quite a nice design. Um, again, I think the it's like Yonix have got understated design, but really highly polished, well executed, nicely done. Um, Leaning have this specific sort of design where they put a fair bit of similar kind of graphics around the head of the racket, and they have a basic selection of. Um, graphics on the shaft. It's a perfectly presentable jo um, paint job, accurate, nicely done, nicely finished, nothing wrong with it, just not particularly exciting or unique or that creative. But have a look at these images and see what you think for yourself. Okay, specifications are done. Let's go to the E zone. Okay, so before we start our E zone testing, what do you need to know about how we test our rackets? Well, first of all, we use the same shuttles, the Yonix AS30s on all tests. We string, restring all of the rackets with Yonex BG65 at 25 pounds tension. 
and it's the same player taking all of the shots. Right, now you have some basic understanding of how we test. Let's move on to the smash test. The smash shot that you're seeing here and for all of the rackets we've tested within Badminton Racket Reviews E-Zone, uh, we take generally six shots. We take the two highest uh, racket uh, shuttle speeds and we average those to give us a uh, overall speed. If those two uh, if those two readings are not within a certain percentage of each other, we then retake the entire test. This shot measures the shuttle speed uh, coming off the racket head and also if you go across to the E-Zone you'll see a picture similar to the one you're looking at on the screen now which accompanies every single racket within the E-Zone so that's nearly 650 or more rackets with this kind of smash JPEG showing you the racket head speed, the shuttle speed, the distance and the approximate repulsion of the racket. Okay, now we're going to do an E-Zone maneuver test. The maneuver shots was designed to tell us about the racket's acceleration abilities, its ability to shift from one direction to the other or shift quickly from nothing to full speed. It also tests the racket's um, aerodynamics. In this test, the player is sitting still with the racket and once the shuttle is fired, which we, and we measure the shuttle speed to ensure we have uh, consistency within the tests so it's coming at the same speed all the time or roughly the same speed as, as, as much as we can control anyway um, and then the player reacts once the shuttle is fired to hit the shuttle and we are measuring the head speed of the racket during that test Okay, so they're done. Now it's E-Zone control test time. The control test is a simplistic test. We've thought many, many times if there was any other better way of creating a test where we, we are uh, looking, focusing on the control of the racket and able to score it, and we so far haven't come up with anything better. So this, con this control test is essentially a test where we have 14 shots taken you're not seeing all the shots um, on the control video we, we generally film half or less of the shots taken the green bucket here scores maximum the gray scores slightly less and anything in the net or out scores nothing at all So we've done the E-Zone testing, what and how do we conclude the performance of this racket? Well, I would say the main things for you to consider when thinking of this racket is firstly, do you need that huge, huge high string tension? Because that is one of the big selling points of this and the DG range is the big string tension. Now, um, I don't know if you've ever tried to sting, uh, string your racket really high, 32 pounds, but it is like hitting a, a flat wall when you're hitting with it. It does, I do, th we've done some basic tests. We never published the test because we were, we could not get a conclusive uh, result on string tensions. So we didn't ever publish the test, but we did do some extensive uh, testing on string tensions. And the one thing we did notice was if you strung higher, you did get better control. So the string bed is harder and therefore the control is more accurate. 
Outside of that, when you're hitting though, you do feel like you're hitting against a piece of plank of wood. It is, there is nothing in terms of bounce. So that is worth considering because that can start to, the, the vibrations can start to affect your arms, elbows, and so on and so forth. So what, something worth considering. So really not sure if you're going to string. I know that there is a craze now to copy the internationals, uh, the international players, and go really high on string tensions. A lot of people are doing it. Uh, I personally would not recommend it, but um, if you've got the power, you've got the technique, and you've got you can build the air uh, speed to be able to uh, produce enough power off that kind of string tension, then go for it. Higher string tensions definitely do not give you more power. We have conclusively proved that. Never published the information, but we have the evidence from our own testing to prove that that is not the case. But control, it does give you. So if high string tensions are not a priority, then this racket really doesn't offer a lot outside of that. Like with almost all leaning rackets, it offers nice level of control. So at the net, you're gonna get decent level of control and from the back of the court, also decent level of control. Smash power with this is, given its specs, I, I would expect it to be better. Um, I suspect half the reason it's not smashing as hard as one might expect is because it feels slow in the air and you can really feel that heaviness in the racket. It feels heavy and it feels slow. So um, if that's your cup of tea, maybe give it a try. For most doubles players in this day and age, you're looking for something lively, you're looking for something fast, and you're looking for something that can move. Because in doubles, especially as you start to step up the pace a little bit, shuttle will start flying at you at a fairly high speed and you need to get be behind those shots whether it's a drive shot whether it's a defensive shot and you need to be able to be able to smash repeatedly without knackering yourself out tiring yourself out so uh, from my perspective unfortunately despite the price um, it's a, definitely a thumbs down for this racket um, it's far too heavy in feeling too sluggish to use doesn't have any great advantages outside of control and there's just too much on the market uh, around the 90 pound mark so the king k9 the honor s6 the goosen uh, gravitas uh, sr was it seven sr the inferno plus um, uh, there's adidas rackets uh, and then if you want to drop down in price we've got the apex wave 10 we've got the a abros venom uh, all superior to this racket so cannot recommend it absolutely would make no sense however are you a user of this racket do you love it i remember somebody wrote something somewhere on one of the youtube videos that they are using the 8200 plus and got a massive smash out of it well i find that very interesting um are you one of those people that have used this racket and found it to be quick in the air and really fast and great smashing racket well write a review are you an e-zone user write a review in the e-zone thousands of people visit the e-zone every month write a review help other people out if you have used this racket and love it uh, if you use this racket and hate it doesn't really matter everyone's experience is going to be difficult it is impossible to cater for everybody no one in the history of mankind has ever done that I'm able to make everybody happy so we're going to have different views that is absolutely fine. Our job is to do as thorough testing as possible and provide you with, with our conclusions on the racket based on level testing. And that's a benchmark, a foundation for you to work from in terms of making a decision on the racket. So leave reviews. I think that's the way forward. We need to see more reviews being left on our social media platforms if you're not E-Zone members. If you even, don't even know what the E-Zone is by now, there will be a video tour Following this video will give you an idea of what's going on with the, within the E-Zone. So, outside of that, thank you for your support. All across the world, wherever you are, whichever country you're from, thank you for tuning in, thank you for watching, and thank you for your support. Um, it's heartwarming uh, how many parts of the planet Planet Racket Review is now reaching. Please do keep up the likes. Please do keep sharing the videos. Thank you again and see you on the next video.